Hey there, I'm Steve from Legion ABS, and in this video, I'm gonna teach you how to get your Blackmagic ATEM HD Studio video switcher up and running. We're gonna look at how to properly set up and use the switcher for our live events, which is a must know for any video operator. It has four HDMI in ports and four SDI in ports, which allow for a lot of flexibility depending on your video inputs. The top four SDI ports are intended as signal returns to go back to your cameras, but they can also be used as an additional program out. It also has a multi-view HDMI and SDI port for attaching a monitor. The port you'll use will depend on the type of monitor you're using. Today, we will be using HDMI. The two analog audio in ports are for introducing clean audio directly into your video switcher for projects like web streams or feeding signal to an overflow viewing area. For most events, we will use the ATEM Software Control, a digital control surface program which will allow you to use all the features of the ATEM. On the back of the device, next to the power, you will find an Ethernet port. This is the control port that is going to attach to your control computer. And finally, the power supply, which is included in the travel case. Your control computer should be connected to the control port with an Ethernet cable. The Ethernet cable and Ethernet to USB-C adapter will be in the ATEM's travel case. It's important to note that you should never use the master computer as a video source. Your program feed will be coming from the program SDI output and will run to your video destination, whether that's a TV, projector, or a web stream encoder. Once you have all your cables run and plugged in, boot up the ATEM and open the ATEM software control program on your control computer. The ATEM will power on as soon as you plug it in. There's no power switch. When you open the ATEM software control for the first time, it may say it cannot find the device and ask for an IP address. If this is the case, don't worry, this is normal. You just need to type in the ATEM IP address exactly as listed on the top of the ATEM switcher. Once it's entered, hit save and you should be connected. However, if you're still having an issue, you may need to do one more step. Open the system preferences on the MacBook and click the network icon. In the bottom left corner is a small plus button which you will need to click. A submenu will appear asking you to select the interface. Choose Belkin USB-C LAN and leave the automatic service name. Then hit create. The Belkin USB-C LAN will appear in the list on the left side. In the center of the screen, change the Configure IPv4 to manually from the drop-down menu. Then under IP addresses, enter the first IP address under the computer IP section on top of the ATEM switcher. In this case, it's 192.168.10.10. For subnet mask, you will need to enter the second IP address listed on top of the ATEM. For this one, it is 255.255.255.0. Now you should be all set. It seems intimidating at first, but you'll get the hang of it in no time. After that quick setup, you should be looking at the control interface for the ATEM switcher, which has a bunch of different buttons that we'll explain. In the top left section are your program buttons. The one highlighted in red is the input that is currently live. If you click on one of the other buttons in this section, the feed will automatically jump to that input, which you'll want to avoid during a live production unless completely necessary. Instead, you'll want to select a source below in the preview section. The source highlighted in green is on standby to go live. When you hit the enter key, the ATEM will fade from the source that is currently in program to what you have selected in the preview section. After you press enter, you'll notice that the button in program that was red and the button in preview that was in green have switched colors. This is because what was in preview is now the source being fed out to the monitors and therefore should now be red and vice versa with the preview button. When switching between sources, you can press enter for a one second crossfade or the space bar for a direct cut between sources. Down at the bottom of the screen is a button labeled media, which is important for most video switching applications. Clicking on it will open a library of static images that you can add to in order to use a static image as a hold screen. To add an image to the library, simply drag the image from the desktop to an empty slot in the library and it will be added. Now, to actually use the image, 
drag it from the library to one of the two spots on the right side of the screen under the Media Players header. The ATEM software allows you to save up to two images at a time to transfer to whenever you would like. This is useful for having hold screens on standby in case you need to make adjustments on a computer without feeding out to your monitors. Back on the switcher page, you'll notice two buttons in the program and preview sections labeled MP1 and MP2. These are your static images that you just placed in the media window. MP1 is the top image from the media window, and MP2 is the bottom image. These are selectable just like every other source on the board and can be switched to in the same way. When the event ends, you can go to your static hold screens. The switcher saves the images in its memory and will continue to broadcast them to the monitors until it is powered down, or the SDI output is unplugged from the back of the switcher. Those are the basics you need to get started with the ATEM Video Switcher. You should now be able to set up the switcher, program static images, and use the software to change between different sources. Once you practice a couple times at a real event, you'll be able to set up and use the switcher in your sleep. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions about using the switcher, reach out to me or anyone in the video department and we can help you out.